Oh, okay. that's the story of my life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is the Khan ID. This is the French horn that your students will most likely be playing on. Oh, right. So, crusty rap. I'm not kidding. Because it's already Yes, the tuning slides face the opposite direction, so it's a crusty rap. Um, attached bell. Okay, explain that. It's, explain that. Get everybody pay attention because I know y'all don't learn about these two wraps in your class. Crusty wrap, it's because the tuning slides face opposite directions. Um, oh, why is there a pencil? Oh, we have this. We have pencil clips that we can put on our horns. Super, I wish that we could all super good. Super good. those on all instruments. <laughs> yeah. Super. These are like a dollar ninety nine. You can get packs of five on Amazon. And it goes right on this pipe here, and so all of us have pencils, pencils attached to our French horns, for the most part. It's super convenient because we always have something to write with. Um, attached bell, this is also probably what you'll start students on. Um, it, Do you have a guy or wrap horn too? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me hold this one, you hold the other one so they can see the difference between the wraps. Y'all don't learn this in your class, right? No. Nope. Okay. Same side. Does the second, I forgot, uh, does the second slide do anything? I know the first slide is the main. It's the same. Main and F. Oh, so, okay, so that's the main tuning slide for the attack. Mm -hmm. Time. I, that's a really good idea. I guess it's, that's the only instrument you, well, I guess you could do that on euphonium, maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah, you'd probably have to get a different size, <laughs> size clip. They have one from bones, don't they? Yeah. They have like leather ones that you can put around your um, One thing to keep in mind is that these, the cases are shaped really weird, so you'll have to also teach how to carry their horn and how to move maneuver the cases and whatnot because of the attachment. Hold up. <clears throat> On that subject, please teach. It's okay. I've <laughs> done this for a long time. Please teach your students to hold their instruments like this when they walk. Because when you go at UIL and you have kids that hold them like this and they're dragging them, and I'm not kidding, we see this at high school contests too. One of your judges are probably going to say something about that out of six. One out of six is going to see that. And it's going to be something that teaches middle school that's more attuned to things like that. Okay. And this is just a side note too. You should never let kids do this in class when they're not playing. Like they're waiting to play and their fingers are on the valves and they do this instead. That, like on a bass clarinet, when they put their hand down the neck, that's very bad because it, it's gonna strip and it's not gonna be able to rise when you want it pulled for intonation. This just messes with the angle. There are a lot of kids playing French horns in schools where the angles are wrong because of how kids have hold them, held them. And the directors cannot afford to get them fixed. So the kids are playing, you know what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. with funky uh, lead pipes. And it's not because the horn has a defect. It's because of years of kids doing that. So be on the lookout for that. And if that comes unsoldered, which I've also seen, not as much as on euphonium, we're getting to that because that is very common and on tuba. But that's like over $100 to fix. And that kid's going to be without a horn for a while, too, if you don't have a backup horn. Okay, show them the fake tuning slide, as it's shown on the picture. Okay. And then where's the trigger slide? There's no B-flat tuning slide. That's right. The only ones that you'll see that on this list are the Holtons. Um, you may never see it because you'll be playing on cons, but um, that's something to keep in mind of. Okay, questions? Okay, what other brand do you have today? That's it. Okay. Thank you, Michael, for bringing that in. That, is that Corinne's horn? Yes. Okay, thank her for And Eric's. Okay, questions on French horn. All right, trombone. <coughs> okay, in general, and you will be addressing this, you will have clinicians address this, you will have master, cl master class teachers and uh, UIL and festival judges um, 
always commenting about slide positions in general. And most often the comments will be that second positions are always too long. Fifth positions will always be too long, especially with younger students. Um, the best markings to write in music, and Colin was just at a school that I, that I was at yesterday and heard me say this to like two or three of the four bands I helped. It's as simple as making them put a capital L or a capital S on a note. Don't have them write the word flat or sharp. That doesn't mean anything. That's too much. It needs to be, you know, that's equivalent to putting bis on a B flat on a saxophone note or a flute um, doing LTRT or um, a saxophone or a clarinet player putting SK, side key, RL, okay? So it's not just woodwinds that have those, these nifty little markings. It's just something that's really easy so when the kids arrive at a certain note, they're making the position longer or they're making the position shorter. Mr. Vincent? Yes. Are you also okay with up arrows, down arrows, just think higher, lower pitch? If, yes, that's fine. It's the same thing. You said second and fifth position were too long? Oh, I mean, with little kids, almost all, well, not just little kids. I mean, Mr. Dixon was just addressing that in the trombone section on Friday at one of our bands here in a very simplistic, you know, passage. Just a tendency. Don't make students play six and seven positions until their arms are long enough. Now, if you're thinking, well, how are they going to play scales? How are they going to play their songs? How are they going to play their audition material at the end of their sixth grade year? Remember last semester when I did this? You've got to get a kid. You don't have to have a trombone to do that. You have them, when they're, you're interviewing them, just have them do this. And you've got to, by sight, figure out. And brass players, that should be easy for you, especially because you've sat around trombone players you know, for the last six or seven years, you gotta figure out this plus a little bit of growing. Now, if they have an inability to do fifth, don't put them on trombone. If they sound awesome on the mouthpiece, then you know you have another option, and that's euphonium or tuba, okay? But um, yeah, if they can't get fifth and sixth you think is gonna be an issue, for the first year, I would not put them on trombone. You can't wait until their growth spurt in eighth grade. And I know that's hard to tell, but not with a lot of the kids that I see, like really T90 kids that have no business playing trombone. And I just feel sorry for them because they're not, I mean, they're going to go through their, their first two or three years not able to play things that their friends are. And I just think that that's, that's sad. Okay, do not allow uh, students to gauge huh, third position with their finger or fingers on the bell because that is not the, the catch-all for all brands of trombones, especially if the tuning slide is not in the right place. Uh, Thomas, can you come closer to the table and I'll pull this back so the camera can capture some of this or all of this. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and, I mean, no offense to Melissa, you know, to our, tr our trombone players in here, but like, well, our college kids do that too, because I see them, and Mr. Dixon sees them. Why do we not address it? Because we're adults. Yeah, <laughs> and you got this far. <laughs> right? I mean, it didn't prevent you from being a great musician here, but with public school kids, that's your job. Okay, will you show that gauging? So you have anything in third position, any sort of use your fingers to gauge where you are. Uh, sometimes in third position is before the bell, sometimes it's right after the bell, and you can feel that if you're too lazy to look at it or listen for it. So. Um, I'm not going to tell you that every band director does not let kids do that. I'm also not going to tell you that there are band directors that teach what he just did in the beginner class. I'm not saying, well, I kind of am saying that it's wrong. 
question you that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if this is like a thing, but can you like put marks on the bell? No. Or not the bell, but like on the side note? Okay. No. Okay, seventh position is past the stocking area, and that's the raised area. Can you show them that, that where that is? I'm just, we're just assuming that we, we all... You can see a little line where the, the slide lubricant ends. That's because this area is actually thicker than the rest of the slide. This, this end right here. And you'll be able to see lines if when you look at a slide. Is there a line on all trombone? Yes. yes. Trombone, okay. Is, this part is where the, it actually touches the outer slide. You call it the stock. Stocking. 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 That's on your handout. Okay. Okay, and then, um, and I can have Thomas show this, but I think you probably know what I'm talking about. Don't let kids, we may have talked about this last semester, look, don't let them do this with the slide for kids to get six and seven. And I see that in schools, too. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, we have people that I don't think of that. No, actually put, pretend like his foot is smaller and actually put it in the slide. They do that. Oh, my God. Wait, what? That's why you don't let them do that. It's fine. Pseudo show that again. <laughs> See, don't let them do that. Just to get seventh position out. So that means in their chromatic scale, they just have a couple ghost notes. Remember, like we do on trumpets when they can't play up to the top notes, we call those ghost notes. And that means that they're doing seventh position really at sixth for now. But you're talking in class uh, so they know that next year when you get bigger, you will actually be moving your slide farther. But don't have kids contort their body to do that because they won't stop. Just like college players and high school kids that gauge, do all these things that are wrong, they don't ever stop. They just, they don't. A habit is a habit. Can I add one more thing about using your foot? Sure. Um, don't let them use their feet to open the spit valve. Because a lot of them, they don't have trouble reaching it. You have to teach them to pull it back to reach the spit valve. Because this is a very sensitive part of the horn. Um, it, it comes off easily. It comes in screwed easily. Um, and it's just something you don't want to mess with if, if the spring gets uh, detached. And you really don't need to send air through your horn to empty out the spit. Because that's, that's the angle. You really don't need to. Uh, you mean you don't have to blow through the mouthpiece? You don't need to. You can just, like, if you have to move it back. But it's, like you can, it's sitting at an angle, so the water's going to... Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. And then we get out of habit just because we've always been doing it. It doesn't have to be done. Now, that is not true of the other brass instruments. Michael, I'm going to come back to you, and I want you to empty... This is in our UIL unit, but we need to teach it now while the instruments are here about emptying water. Okay, keep going, Thomas. Okay, Thomas is going to show you, and you're going to need to take notes on this because um, he's going to show how to clean the slide. And he did this in San Antonio, and a lot of the managers, that's the first time they had ever received. I just don't understand. I just don't get it. Y'all are so spoiled. <laughs> thank you. All right, so the standard uh, thing people spoiled. use is trombone team. Um, it's about $7 a tube and it'll last several years because <coughs> you don't need that much. Uh, band directors now are switching to Yamaha slide oil, but this is still what you'll see mostly in schools. Uh, the, the main drawback of it is that it eventually, since it is a cream, it builds up inside the slide. So before you reapply, you, uh, at least every other time that you apply a new drum routine, you need to take a cleaning rod, um, cheesecloth, you can get a lot for five bucks at Walmart. Wrap it around your cleaning rod. Make sure the top is covered. You don't want it, in case you actually hit the crook of the slide, you don't want it, the exposed metal hitting it. It'll at least be cushioned a little bit. Make sure you have enough at the end in case it gets stuck. You don't want all the cloth going down in there and not being able to pull it out. You take your outer slide. You put the cheesecloth in and you just work it back and forth. Friction is a good thing. Don't be afraid of <coughs> hurting the slide by putting in a lot because the friction is going to break the chemical bonding that allows the, um, the lubricant to crystallize inside the slide. So don't be afraid of, um, if you feel heat or if anything like that, it, the slide's going to be fine. It's actually better for the slide. 
do the other side. I just cleaned this because I didn't want to be embarrassed when <laughs> when it came out, so it's, it's not going to be too bad. I swabbed one of my students' horn yesterday. It was brown. Uh, and then even now, you can still see just a little bit. Um, if, you, if you're seeing green, that means the metal's oxidizing, and it's actually eating away at the metal. So kids need to be doing this, this part at least every two weeks. Um, that's true in that that's true with French horn and trumpet slides too, right? When they turn start turning green. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the, the inner slide. And especially this is the part where your mouthpiece attaches. So this this goes straight, your air goes straight through the slide. So it's important to get this part cleaned well. All right, now honest Melissa, when did you learn how to did you learn how to do that in public school? My there's a guy who was our student teacher when I was in middle school, who was an older guy, and I ended up taking lessons from him. So I actually learned how to do that when I was in middle school, but we were not taught how to do that in middle school or high school. Wow. What about you? Um, I had very good lesson teachers who taught me how to do this, and Mr. Hunter taught us all how to do this off the bat. So. In a beginner class? Mm -hmm. I'm surprised about that. And then, um, so the outer slide... Not because of him, because uh, of... I was like, uh, oh, because the, the situation is the same now than it was back then. I mean, I'm teaching this stuff like I did when I got here, for the same reasons. Um, so the inner slide, it may be worth mentioning to your students that it's plated nickel, it's not silver. So when they see their friends getting silver trumpets and polishing it with the silver, don't let them borrow it to clean their slide. I've, I've seen that happen and it's not good for it. Um, if they want to get the excess uh, crystallized tremontine off of here, a window cleaner is just fine because it's just nickel, Windex, anything's going to be fine. Uh, a cloth. Uh, and you got a lot of snickers about that in that TBA clinic in San Antonio, but I mean, I, I see the village. I mean, the, did you you know that, right? Yeah. But, I mean, Christian, yeah. Christian Griego recommends that. He's the one who builds these horns. So. This is the only instrument that you would use like Windex or Glass Plus on. I mean, it's, it's nickel. Not to clean a flute. <laughs> I also use, um, like, if you have a gentle dish soap, mm. that's what I use too, to get my back dish soap. And so uh, I just have a cotton t-shirt that I use, get all of the excess off from the last time you've used it. How often should students be doing this? Every seven to ten days. <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, there, there, there are a couple every ways. seven years, right? <laughs> <laughs> Aaron knows that good cleans it every day and re reapplies every day. It's, and as, as your students get older, how they do this is going to get very personal. Just some of you, I only do every four days, I do every three and a half days on the full moon. It gets really weird, but this isn't a perfect product. It's not a perfect product. It, it works differently for every trombone and every person, but just, this is sort of the standard way of doing it. Well, and a lot of people like, because if, especially as you get older, if you're really like, if you're going to eat before you play and like you just, then you clean your horn more regularly if you're going to do that. Like, I, if you're just going to be a stickler that you have to eat your lunch before band, then you clean your horn more regularly. And then, so you only need a very small amount of trombone not even pea-sized. <clears throat> I don't know if y'all, I know you don't have the detailed maintenance kit list like you get in my class, but you need to remember that that needs to be in the kids in sixth grade. It doesn't matter whether, you may not teach this until November or December, like this time of the year, but it needs to be in there. So it's T-R-O-B-O-N, it's like no, trombo, and then T-I-N-E, trombo, T-I-N-E. And every roadman's going to know exactly what that is. So. That should be a standard, like if I was teaching that class, that would be on the required list, not the optional list. So you take a very small amount, and like we were talking about earlier, there are stockings, little lines that show where the slide expands. And this is the actual part that's touching the inner slide. So this is the part you need to start off when you're using the trombone teen. So you start on this end, and then eventually you work it all the way up. And you don't want to see any trombone teen when you're done with this. It needs to be completely see-through, completely clear. If you can see any at all, you haven't worked it in enough, or you simply need to wipe it off and start over again. Um, kids' tendency is, is, of course, to use too much because they think the more they use, the better the slide's going to work, which is not the case with this. Then same amount, very small. Apply it to the other side as well. And once it's to the point where you can't see it, 
take your outer slide, put it in opposite way first, one stocking at a time. So make sure it's evenly distributed through the outer slide as well. And then line it back up. Always, always bring the outer slide to the inner slide. These parts are very sensitive. If you try to move this around too much and it hits any of this, they can become unaligned and the slide won't work properly. So always bring the outer slide to the inner slide. And then the kids should always have a water bottle with them. Uh, I used distilled water, it's just no lead, no calcium buildup over time. Okay, side note. This needs to also be on the required list. And if your reason is the kids play around with them and they spray them in class, that's on you. You have to teach that correctly from the beginning. <laughs> you know that that is the reason why teachers do not have kids getting those in their kids. Because they've had bad experiences in the past, so you've got to break through that. <clears throat> Sit them a seat apart. Tell them their instrument's going to go and time out on the floor for five minutes. If you ever see them doing that, whatever it takes. But this is crucial to these, the correct maintenance of a trombone. You guys go with spray each other for everyone who knows we heard in our section. Nice. Like, it's wrong. At my high school, we weren't allowed to have our spray bottles at our seat because right. it got time. But, um, <laughs> distilled water, like I said, is best. Uh, it's, it's really easy. Just keep a jug and kids can refill the water bottles they need to. But the, actually, the slide lubricant's job is to hold the water, and that's why you have both parts to it. It's really a two-part process. The, the lubricant works, but it also holds the water, which helps for the lubricate the slide. Once that's in, the slide... Oh. Another thing about trombone team, um, your kids won't notice this, but it does take, for me, at least two to three practice sessions to set in. So like before, like before my recital, I'm going to actually do it on maybe Thursday. Uh, just because it, it takes a little bit of time to evenly distribute it, you know, as well as you try to do it when it, during the process, it just it takes a little bit. But, um, a little bit more water. Dylan? Um, this might be like a stupid question, but like the outer slide, does it, well, you always... Stupid question, I'm going to go across in your coach. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the spit valve, does it always line up with the longer yes. slide? Yes. Or, okay, so... So it always comes from the opposite of... So this is the lead pipe right here. Okay. It's always opposite of the lead pipe. It's because that's where the spit, spit. all collects. Okay. Because mm -hmm. it comes down here and just collects right. And then the slides should drop uh, without once you let go of them. I would venture to say that even brass players that teach a trombone class don't do about 80% of that with students. Just trombone player band directors probably. And Mr. Hunter taught me the basics. He's my private lesson teacher. He went into detail. Not how to take care of the instrument. Anything else? Do you want to talk about snakes? Snakes, yes. <coughs> um, so I keep all my cleaning supplies in the shoe box, which has worked really well for me. I have all the cloths I need, all the everything. Uh, oh wow, those have been sold for decades. Shoe boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Snake. Uh, I use it when I'm giving my trombone a bath. Uh, I bathe all the separate, all the parts separately. Uh, like Mel said, uh, I do the same thing. I use a, a light dish soap. Um, palm olive is what I use, and the snake. Uh, once your trombone is thoroughly soaked, make sure the snake is soaked too, because these bristles can be pretty aggressive. Um, you literally just run the snake through the trombone, and you'll see a lot of the food that you ate in the past couple oh. months. So, yeah. uh, bathing your trombone is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, good stuff. <laughs> uh, bathing your trombone in, in, in a bathtub is recommended at least once a month. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what do you do? Yeah. About that. That 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 right. Once a month, if I remember. <laughs> once a month, if you remember. Is that yeah, just no, like no. dish soap? Yeah. Dish soap. Oh, okay. so just and just rinse it with uh, lukewarm water, nothing too hot, nothing too cold. If you... Just, if right. Kids think they're going to like... Boil their trombone that can actually strip the lacquer. Don't do that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I know, I know you say don't get parents involved with horn maintenance, but parents can tell what's what's going to work for a metal or what's not. You know, they they can help them with that. 
So this bathing, it's just like letting it sit in the warm water for how long? Um, five to ten minutes. <laughs> and it, really, the the water's purpose is to break up anything that's inside of the instrument and use a snake to push it out. Mm -hmm. okay. Sort of like a pipe cleaner. If you have a like a, my parents' house, they have a detachable shower head, and you can like change the settings on it. So I like to do that instead of soaking it if I want to go faster because it actually sends the water sure. like actively through your trombone. Somebody actually came up with a, a tool that can be used for all brass instruments. Today. Yeah, I have one. It's called a quick rinse, and it's, it basically looks like a little like like a little gun, and you can attach the the end of it to the leak pipe, and then on the uh, on the back end you can insert like dish soap. And on the bottom of it, like where you would hold it, you can insert a, a water hose. And then you just like press a button for the soap to like go through the horn, and then you can put, uh, like, just spray water through it. And it cleans the horn just like you would give it a bath. Cool. Not as necessary for trombones because we don't have all the intricate yeah, it, piping, it, but for. If I like euphoniums and like say trombone, oh, I'm sorry, uh, trumpets and French horns perhaps, um, and tubas, you can use that. Um, this guy. He said that you could use it for all. I, I've used it on mine a few times, and it's worked really well. So they're making a whole bunch of different options, like I said. What was it called? A quick rinse. Don't do that. Buy those out, Nathan. And you have to order them from uh, just the guy. I, don't, I You I can't get it from my like, Woodwind band. No, Woodwind's he, brass he makes them himself and sells them. Okay, online. Interesting. I'll bring it on, on Monday. For tubas, you can do that if they're piston valved, but if they're rotary valved, don't don't like try to stick with the horn or anything like that because rotary valves are a lot more intricate. I have a rotary valve tube I can show you all later, but um, that can cause like rusting and build up, so just don't do it with the rotary valve. So also trombone triggers are rotary valves, they're not obviously the rotaries are here. Be careful for your kids, don't mix um, synthetic oils and normal oil because it will mm -hmm. clog. I'm sure it's the same with this one. You can't mix oils because it'll clog it and slow it down. Okay, can you show the main tuning slide? Mm -hmm. Main tuning slide, uh, same with the French horn. You trace it from the lead pipe, and the first tuning slide is right here. It's the main tuning slide. And you pull, push as necessary. And then the when you uh, depress the trigger, the air travels through here. It will travels through the normal slide, then it travels through the trigger, other way around, trigger, then normal slide. But when you're adjusting the tuning trigger slide, Always have the uh, the trigger pushed down because when it's um, when it's just normal like this, this air is sealed off. So if you push and pull, you're creating a vacuum that can damage the instrument over time. So always uh, open the trigger before you mess with the, the trigger tuning slide. That's with all instruments. All valve yeah. instruments. Push down the valve and then pull off the slide and then uh, push it back. You don't get a something. Oh, the popping nice. sound like on a trumpet that does okay. damage to it after time. Something I've noticed with the trombones is that you don't hear that popping as much as you do with the other instruments. So a lot of kids don't think that it's doing that. So be sure to tell them that it still is doing that even though there's no sound. Okay, now for the main tuning slide, like with beginners who don't have triggers, they shouldn't. They should not be pushing all the way. I was at Joseph's school yesterday and Wednesday and next week. I haven't done his band yet. I did the first two bands. And like yesterday, we discovered uh, that all the trombones and euphoniums have their sides pushed in all the way. And that's why they were playing above center. That's not their fault. Those are, you know, they came from junior highs, but that was not taught. Which means, which means they, I don't know how they got ever tuned. And if they're playing in tune with the slide pushed in all the way, that is bad news. And that's sad. Okay, so you have to work for kids to uh, play your, their Fs and their B flats and stuff uh, in tune uh, without doing that. The trigger sides should not be pushed in all the way either. So, the tuning note for trombone. Oh gosh, I don't even have that on here. It's on the one before it. Yeah, yeah, the French one. It's on the French one. Oh, my. It's previous. It's further back. Yeah, I think. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Those are, those are bad notes. Oh, uh, I was, I had skipped several pages ahead. Okay. So. I keep saying something. 
Remember that, um, as it says, when you play a fourth line F, you should be teaching not in a performing ensemble. You should teach in the beginner class as part of the fingering, that it should be out a few millimeters. Now, that's when you should use a tuner eventually in a beginner class, once they start sounding good, so they know how to do that. You teaching from the podium are not going to see if kids are really doing that. It's kind of an honor system thing. You can't tell. There's no way you can tell when you're that far away, even when you're close to them. So the little kids need reminders. Uh, high school kids need to be retaught that. Because if they weren't made to do that in middle school, you have to reteach that. And you're like, well, that's the basic first note they learn. Yeah, it is. And yes, you have to reteach it. Now, for uh, B flats, you don't do that. And some managers teach it, it's for everything first position, and that is scary and it's wrong. You only do that on fourth line F. So remember that. Um, when using the trigger, remember this is the way you, you can remember this positions end up being bigger. So if you want to add this, because you're adding length to the instrument. Trigger second position. It's always uh, trigger one will be kicked out just as much as the concert F. Then it's trigger flat second, trigger flat third, like flat flat third, trigger like fourth and a half, closer to fifth. Then you skip trigger fifth and you go straight to like trigger sixth. It's, some, it's different for every trigger, but and then you have like a trigger flat flat seventh, then you have a trigger flat seventh put down. There's no like normal positions with the trigger anymore. Okay, so the last bullet on the page, when tuning the trigger slide, use below the staff F and adjust the trigger slide, not the main tuning slide. Okay? Mm -hmm. I've never tuned to that trigger note before. What do you tune? C, because that's the primary note you use it What for. do you tune? Where it sounds good. I don't know. It, I don't usually tune my trigger, honestly. Okay. Because um. no, that, that F... In my entire time I've had a trigger, I've only played a trigger low F twice, and it was for high school region bands. Okay, so add or second space C. With the second space C, though, you still have to kick out your trigger a lot. And same with, like, to play B natural. I find I have to kick out the C and the B natural more than the F. Mm -hmm. C mine's different. I, my mm -hmm. trigger C's about right. Uh, that's going to depend on the brand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, yeah, like, my F, I, like, I'm always fighting my F to be too flat in trigger one. And you're working with two different slides, so both will, one will affect the other. <coughs> okay, thank you, Thomas. That's good information. Let's go to Euphonium. And uh, yeah, I was on the wrong page. So we actually, you know, that we've already talked. Well, we'll get there. Okay, next page. Okay, same thing for. Oh, let I me. Mean, this is a just a general comment for all uh, low brass instruments. <clears throat> if they're B flats, they're high B flats I'm calling